Hello, and welcome back to Not a College Grad. My name is Alyssa, um, and I am, I'm not hungover, but it's like, you don't feel hungover, but you just had a rough, it wasn't even a rough night, but just alcohol. You know how it goes. Happy Thursday. Um, If you were on the video version of this, you understand what I mean when you look at me, Um, but we're just going to roll with it. Um, We do upload a video version of this podcast to Spotify as well as YouTube. The YouTube version does go up later, um, but you can view the video version of this on Spotify. All right. Um, So not a lot of breaking news happening since the last time I spoke to you, but I did want to talk about the Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey thing. This is this is huge news. This is a very public form of we just started hanging or something is like, you know, we don't really know what's going on. They could have been hanging out for months for all that we know. But I'm a fan of Taylor Swift and like it's indifferent to me who she's dating. Like people that got upset that she was dating someone, I'll never understand things like that. Although I do think that Travis Kelsey is the kind of the kind of man that she might need because I know her. I know her. I know what she needs. And um, I just feel like I've always thought I, I never really understood why she didn't date someone that was more like comfortable being in the public whenever she's the Joe Allen guy or whatever. Um, kind of seemed like he like hid her from the world, which is weird. Um, it was also just a weird time in history. Like 2020 was an odd, odd moment and a little blip that I just can never unsee. So, you know, we, like I'm saying though, I am a fan of her and the moment, whenever stuff like this starts happening, it's so annoying even to me who like, like seeing content of her because it, it becomes everything that everyone is talking about. Um, and it's just odd. It, it's like the whole thing that the whole thing that she's like been pushing since she was young was like everyone is so obsessed with who I am dating and it's all this so much speculation just so much whatever about who I am dating and like even still after years of this like the NFL like changing their name on Twitter to like Taylor's version I don't know I just think stuff like that is like distasteful in like it's like yeah it can be breaking news but like it doesn't have to be a joke made by these like massive companies you don't have to say anything about it and I get it's like these companies trying to be relatable and adaptive to like the Gen Z on social media like I I get why they do it I just don't understand why they do it at the same time so it's like I don't know I just think that a lot of times they are crossing weird lines with stuff like this and it's normally about her it's normally like she's so famous and I get that but do it's it is now Thursday and I'm still seeing like the meme of Taylor Swift looking so happy on like these huge company accounts and whatever. I was like making, um, content for my like October media clients. And I had to throw in a Taylor Swift meme because I'm like, I feel like we're not on the bandwagon and these companies need to look like they're current. And I'm like, maybe I should put in a meme, but it's just so the only way I can explain it is like, I don't know if it's cringe. I don't know if it's just overdone. I don't know if I don't like it because everybody is doing it. I don't know because it's, it's just a weird, weird thing. I also just think it's weird that these huge companies are like making jokes out of like these two people hanging out and maybe like Taylor Swift wanted that. Like, I don't know. I don't get it because she is so like professional about putting like Easter eggs and like these sorts of things out to like promote product projects and stuff that she has. But, like, I just don't think the girl needs any more publicity around anything that she puts out. People are going to buy it. It's going to break records. So, like, I just don't think that she is, like, trying to put in all of this effort to make her personal life boost her sales. I don't think she needs to do that. 
Um, so I don't think that she's doing that. I could be wrong because maybe the woman is just a cap, like the most extreme version of like a capitalist. And I think that she is, I do, I do believe that. Um, and I know this is kind of a weird way to start this episode. I was just thinking about it. Like I wanted to talk about it because like whenever it was all happening, my friends and I were texting each other in a group chat and we're like, Oh, wow. She's like out in public with the, you know, publicly being like, I'm here to see this dude who like publicly hit on her. It's just never, it's, it's like on un, uncharted territory, um, in a way, especially for like Taylor's the, the Taylor Swift that we know now, because she's been so private for the last few years. Um, but I mean, I enjoy the content. I enjoy the content. I don't think we need all of the large corporations making it a joke that they use for marketing tools. Um, but we do love the content. <clears throat> so thank you, Taylor Swift, for that. Um, and uh, moving on to our next subject of discussion. I told you guys that Wednesday, which was yesterday, um, my friend and I were going to the Charlotte Fashion Week kickoff party. And it's let me tell you what that means because Charlotte doesn't have a fashion week, so to speak. Um, there is like one company that puts on what they call Charlotte fashion week and the company is Charlotte scene. So basically what they do is they host, um, every week in September, like for one week in September, they host, um, three fashion shows. I think, I think they do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and each night has a theme. They're normally raising money for like a charity or something like that. But like these designers, these like local Charlotte based designers are buying into the show. And then Charlotte scene like has models that volunteer to walk on the runway. And they, um, they, I'm like losing myself in this. I'm tired. (laughs) So they have these models volunteer and then the designers pay to have like X amount of looks, like go out on the runway to promote their, their brand or whatever. It's always interesting though, because it's like these designers, there's no way they're selling pieces off of these models. Like the stuff that they put them in based on the themes of each night is just not something that like a practical person buys, which is what like New York fashion week is like most people aren't going to buy the pieces that those runway models are wearing, but it kind of sets a tone for what the trends are going to be that season. Um, and don't get me wrong. Like a lot of times, like the runway looks are going to be a mix of like 18 different pieces that are available in their like spring summer collection next year. But like the, and people can buy directly off the runway now, which kind of is game changing the whole, I'm sorry. (laughs) Sorry. I am literally a mess today. Um, but there's like this new, new wave of like you're able to buy things online the moment that the fashion show happens which is kind of like revolutionary for these big designers and things like that because that's never been so available to just the public um as it is now sorry i'm like having congestion issues today so anyway charlotte scene the designers are buying into the show they they put the clothes on these volunteer models there are hairdressers and makeup artists that volunteer their time to build their portfolio because the looks are normally like pretty chaotic and crazy which is really fun um and then before they do the fashion shows they have a kickoff party normally somewhere in like uptown charlotte every year um and you get in if you are like press and media. So like the influencers are like the new age of press and media there. And, um, I get in because I'm a videographer. So like I did, you know, I did some photo and video for them. Like when I, in like 2014 was the first time I'd ever gone. And, uh, they kind of just put me on their list as like people that they sent it out to an invite or whatever. Um, just because like the more people that are there taking photos and videos there, the more people that will want to come next year. And the idea is they sell tickets to the fashion show and then, with that, you'll get a ticket to the party and, um, all this kind of stuff. But normally at the party, the first time I went, they had like completely unlimited open bar. It was a dream. I was also like 18. So I was like, Oh, what? And they just, maybe I shouldn't say I was drinking, but nonetheless, the party had an open bar. Um, so it made me think that this was all just so legit because they must have so much money coming in and blah, 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 blah. Well, 
they also get like sponsors um, to help them, like, I guess, cover the venue and the stage and all this stuff because they do it at a different place every year. Um, I'm like telling you the inner workings of their company and I don't even know if this is right. Whatever. I'm just telling you what Charlotte Fashion Week is. So I like to go to the kickoff party because they have free drinks. Um, and it's like a fun little networking experience. The last several years I have not been able to go to any of the fashion shows because it's in the middle of like my busy wedding season. So I definitely can never make it to like their big one, which is their Saturday night show, which is always the most fun. Um, the first year I did go to some of the fashion shows, which was cool. Um, it just wasn't, I'm not a fashion show gal. I just don't, not that I don't care, but I don't care. Um, so, you know, me and Caitlin went, my friend, and we just, they had like you, this time they would give you a ticket and then you would get like one free glass of champagne. And then, um, after that they had like a bar where you can order whatever. Well, we're sitting at the bar and we're living, you know? as as two girls do in the city on a Wednesday night we were living and um I got I was waiting to order some tequila I, I drink tequila is my drink of choice if you know me you know um but we were sitting at the bar and it was a really long way to the bar because it was so busy because obviously like the one glass of champagne is not going to cut it whenever you're in a social scenario um so I went and uh, was waiting and then this man like stepped in beside of me and I recognized him from like literally years and years back of having gone to this party before. Um, and I was like, oh, you're a designer, right? And he's like, yeah, how did you know? How could you tell? And I was like, well, I just know who you are. I follow you on everything. Um, and you know, th- these parties are like the epitome of people gassing themselves up and being like, yeah, I just like got off the runway for New York Fashion Week last week and like here I am donating my time to this Charlotte scene and it's like I believe you yeah okay okay girl but it's it's all fun like most of the people there are there to like promote something that they're doing or have a passion which I think is cool that's why I enjoy going it's like talking to a different breed of people than what I'm used to. So, um, standing there talking to this man, full Gucci blazer, Gucci sunglasses on. It is nighttime. He doesn't need those. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, like I recognize you from a few years back. Like he has a distinct look about him. I also think it's funny though, like fashion designers, right? They, you would think the fashion designer would wear their brand because they think that their designs and their quality is so good. Um, but if that's the case, then why are you spending all of the money on Gucci and then like wearing the Gucci products to a show, to a, a kickoff party for a fashion week event where your brand is the spotlight. And why would you wear like a world renowned renowned? What is that? I'm trying to say like world, re- whatever the word is, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, why would you wear a brand like that? to a Charlotte kickoff party whenever you are a fashion designer promoting your own brand and like paying to be in the show that doesn't make sense to me like I wore my brand and Caitlin wore my brand there so that if anybody asked us oh who are you wearing we just say the place her yeah the um so I'm standing here at the bar or waiting on a drink or whatever and the guy's like, I'd been sitting there for probably like seven or eight minutes, but chairs opened up, which is what we were really waiting on. So I grabbed a couple of chairs and this man is like, how long have you been waiting? And I was like, ah, at least eight minutes. And he was like, oh God. And I just know how the bartender world is and women are going to get asked what they want to drink faster than men. So I was like, oh, like, they have to be coming to me soon because I've been here so long. What do you want? I'll order for you. And he said he wanted two extra dirty martinis. So dirty. You can't see the bottom. And I said, we'll make it three. What the heck? So we made it three. We made it three extra dirty martinis. So dirty. You can't see the bottom. So, um, the bartender comes and I'm like, yeah, I need three extra dirty martinis. And then he throws in right beside me. He says, 
so dirty you can't see the bottom and i'm like heard okay okay so um the martinis come they're vodka i prefer a gin martini myself um i'm not a vodka drinker and me being up all night chugging water every i don't know i just i was up and down all night chugging water every hour and just trying to get through the evening so um they bring the martinis and they're like $21 $21 for one of them. Crazy. It's Tito's. And like martinis are supposed to be filled to the brim. They do have a lot of liquor in them. Like I understand that they cost more than like a regular cocktail, but they're also supposed to be filled to the brim whenever you get it. And uh they weren't. They were like half full and I was like I just paid $21 for that whatever. Um so we're sitting at the bar and this woman, there's like an open space next to me because the fashion designer man has left. And this woman is like standing back behind mine and Caitlin's chairs. And I was like, oh, like come around here and like get a drink. Like come up to the bar. You can stand close to me. It's fine. Um, and she's got on like a scarf and she's looking cool. And um, she was like, oh, what are you drinking? And I was like, uh, extra dirty martini. So dirty. You can't see the bottom. And uh, she was like, oh, she said she was getting a drink with like her vodka and I was like what does that mean like what do you mean by that she said you see that bottle right there that's my brand of vodka and it was literally called Tina's vodka and I said you're Tina and she said yeah and I was like that's really cool like because you just don't meet people that have their own like liquor brand um and she was like is that a vodka martini and I was like yes it's Tito's I apologize I was like if I would have known you were standing right there I definitely would have ordered Tina's and um so we started talking for a minute and she was like, yeah, I, um, she, she's like there, I guess network or whatever. And she was like, do you want me to buy you a drink and I'll make you one? Uh, we'll get it with my vodka and you can tell me which one you like more. And I was like, sure. So, uh, she orders a drink and the bartenders know her because they're always like, oh, that's Tina. She's going to want her vodka, whatever. So this martini was filled to the brim. I mean, Wow. It was full and it was a strong and like, you know, martinis are supposed to be strong, but this baby, it was kicking and her vodka was really good. It was like really smooth. I'm not a vodka drinker, um, but for vodka, it was smooth. I don't like vodka just because of the like, it's like there's a harshness to it that I just like can't get down with. But I will say this is like the smoothest version of a vodka, which is cool. Um, But I was talking to her about maybe like doing some video or marketing or something for her but yeah that was that was the tina's vodka story which i thought was interesting um but yeah caitlin and i had to split that one because someone had to drive us home we left the the party because we really just went for a drink and just wanted to network for a minute i saw a couple of people i knew and then we got out of there um went walking down the street and like charlotte isn't the most safe city whenever it comes to like walking around at night especially since the pandemic um but i will say like there weren't people like on the street so it was like oh okay cool i don't know if it was because it was a wednesday night or whatever but um we went for a little stroll and we went to uh we were walking to midnight diner which is like a 24-hour spot to eat I don't know if it's 24 hours since the pandemic, but I mean, we're talking, we were buzzed by like 930. So we were like, oh, we're crazy. Let's walk to go get some dinner. So we're walking, we're walking down the street and, um, we hear Usher. Usher is in town. He's not in town, but, um, Usher is blaring from this like sign that's sitting on the sidewalk. And it was cool because they had a speaker like under their sign. And it was like one of the sidewalk signs that people set out that like folds out and it tells you like about the place or whatever. And it was Wednesday night and their sign said live jazz Wednesdays and Fridays. And we were like, Ooh, Usher live jazz. That sounds like fun. So of course we go in, we get a little drink and, um, we sit down and Usher's on and we love Usher. So we're sitting down there and we're living and doing our thing and uh they start playing jazz and we're just jazzing and it was a good time 
so we were sitting there and we started talking and god i mean the music was so loud we were yelling we were yelling the music would stop and we'd be like because you know your voice like carries and it's just whatever it was a good time we went to the jazz bar and uh then we went to midnight diner um we walked there got some dinner and I got a buffalo chicken sandwich and I haven't been eating unhealthy. Like I've been eating so clean. I haven't had any like carbs or anything like that all week. And I was like, I just need a sandwich because I got to soak up this alcohol and get down the road. So we eat and we're drinking some water and, uh, our waitress kind of like never came back to check on us after we got our food and like our water was super empty cause we were, you know, chugging the, the wa, the agua and, uh, I had some cash and she just wouldn't come back. She was checking on all the tables, talking to everybody but us. And that's fine. Like I, I don't hold it against her. Um, but I did she said, do you have any cash? And I was like, yeah, I do. She said, just leave it on the table. Let's just leave. And I was like, Oh, I'm about to do that. That's cool. That's very 1975 of us. Um, so pulled out some cash, laid it on the table. We made sure we had enough to cover, you know, our bill and the tip or whatever. Um, what we assumed would cover it. I guess we didn't really know, but I mean, we were waiting for a long time. It's not like we were just being rude. Um, we had even like went up to another server and asked like, can we pay up front? And they were like, no, you have to pay the table. And we were like, oh, okay. Um, and she like, didn't let her know that we were waiting to pay like nothing, you know, just, and that's fine. We're not mad about it. We're not mad, but like we put the money on the table and we walked out of there and we said, oh, we are classy. I mean, I don't know if anybody even, what am I, I don't know what I'm doing here or why I'm talking about this. Excuse me. I just disassociated. No big deal. Moving on. But yeah, that was pretty much the gist of the Charlotte Fashion Week excursion. Um, It wasn't the most interesting thing I've ever done, but it did get us out of the house. And sometimes you just need to like get out of the house with your girlfriend and like, gab gab if you will um and just kind of take a break from like your normal reality of like I don't go out anymore so like it was very different and just not what I'm used to doing anymore so that is that I'm gonna tell you a story of um my worst hangover ever ever and the hangover actually happened the same month that I started this podcast for the first time it's 2020. Picture this. It's 2020, December 31st. And we decide we have this big house. It was uh, me and my brother and then Caitlin, who I just had the Fashion Week excursion with. We had this big old house. And we were like, oh, we're moving out of here, you know, in the spring. This is going to be our only big house that we're going to rent because we were paying way too much money for it and it was stupid so we're like yeah we're going to throw a party we're going to throw a new year's eve bash we're going to set up beer pong table in the house our friend kendall's going to bring his dj set up we're going to throw a party we threw a party and uh because i knew that i didn't have to drive i didn't have to worry about anything i was slinging back the drinks I I was mixing. This was when everybody was drinking seltzers and I could stomach them back then. I cannot drink them anymore. They're just, they taste too sweet to me. I can't, I can't get down with it. So, um, but back then I could, and I was drinking. I had just lost like a lot of weight. I had been working out and I was like two months into really my health kick beginning. So I was like feeling myself. So it's like, oh, screw it. I'm going to get drunk tonight. Uh, who goes in? Uh, that's just like being drunk isn't fun. You don't feel good when you're drunk. You just want it to be over. And then the next day is just not worth it. But you couldn't tell me nothing on December 31st, 2020. So I was in a relationship at the time that no longer exists. And uh, we were, he was there. And he like he drank often um and i didn't because i was on my health kick or whatever and uh my friend had brought her her like film camera 
and I need to backtrack and go ahead and tell you that I am drunk. I'm very drunk. I I don't even think it's midnight yet. Our neighbor, he was a weird fella, and he is just out in the backyard juggling fire. It was an odd bunch. It was an odd bunch of people. Imagine like, imagine one of those cookie cutter neighborhoods with like, you know, they're big houses, but they're cookie cutter houses. Imagine that. And then imagine a man juggling fire at like a house party. I mean, this house was crazy. Um, not at this party, but I mean, this house had a mariachi band in it at one point, you know, like, I don't feel like I've ever done anything in my life sometimes. And then I think, and I'm like, wow, that was a life. That was a whole life that I had. (laughs) But anyway, I'm drunk. The neighbor's juggling fire. We're just, yeah. Like, I don't even know. I don't black out. I don't think I've ever, that was the only night that I had ever blacked out drunk. Um, And I was just, I do have this memory of my friend's ex holding, um, a bottle of Jameson and like I've never drank Jameson I used to drink whiskey but like not that and he's I'm so drunk that he hands me a bottle of Jameson and I drink it for entertainment I'm drinking out of a bottle of Jameson at least two three times just thinking about it makes me want to get sick sorry if you hear my belly rumbling I'm hungry so I'm drinking out of the Jameson bottle, and that's whenever things took a turn. Things are turning. So my friend's like, let's take photos on my film camera. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, I just lost a little weight. That sounds like fun. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking because I was just not not home. I have a memory of like being in the floor during this film camera photo shoot. And uh Definitely not taking myself serious, crawling on the floor, pretending to be like sexy or something. My house is full of people. I don't know who that was, but I was crawling on the floor, like living on the, for the film camera. And I think she got on the floor with me. I don't remember. I do not remember the details. I'll have to have her help me remember. I don't, I don't think she was drinking at all. And (laughs) I'm like crawling on the floor and being weird. And I remember being like on my knees and I was like, eh, and like put my tongue out or like, it was literally like nothing. I wasn't doing anything bad or whatever. And I just remember my ex got so mad. He was mad because our old neighbor who is like in his late fifties, was standing there watching me and I was like you're mad at me because he was watching me in the floor again I don't know what I was doing but definitely it wasn't anything that anybody should be mad about from what I was told um so I do have a memory of being in the floor but that's about all I remember and then I have a memory like snapping back because I realized that my ex and my friend's ex were having a very heated conversation about the fact that he was holding the film camera whenever I was doing these uh what was it what was it that he said Uh, I think it was like sexual poses was what he called what I was doing and I was like dude what it's me it's me nonetheless he was mad he was angry I didn't I was like what and I was so drunk so you know I got emotional immediately and I was like apparently I walked into the other room with my friend and her ex who my ex was just arguing with and they almost like got into fight and I was like I do remember this conversation so slightly only because they were like explaining it to me immediately the next day and uh apparently I said to them he drinks every day and the one time I get drunk it's a problem and it was so dramatic and I I think I got so upset that I ended up having to go upstairs because I couldn't stop crying um just because I had lost my mind at that point obviously the dude was just like insecure that I was like loosened up and like having a good time and like talking to people and like wasn't talking to him I don't I don't know I just like it was just gross um and so 
I uh, did that, and my friend was like, are you okay? Like, it was almost like, it. she said it seemed like I, like, got drunk and finally, like, opened up about, like, how I felt about stuff, and, like, it wasn't, like, a problematic scenario in hindsight even. Like, it wasn't even that big of a deal, but, like, it just was so, so dramatic, and I think it's so funny now, but I got... I went upstairs. I just remember being like really, really upset because I was like, I just need this drunkness to go away. And it was like too far gone. There was nothing I could have eaten. There was nothing I could have done that night. It was a waiting game at this point because I had drank so much. So just had to kind of ride that wave out. I just remember crying because I just wanted it to be over. I'm really bad about that. If I drink too much, I'll start crying because I want the drunkness to go away. And like the emotions hit me and it's just an odd, odd thing. Um, But yeah, I can end up getting really upset about like not being able to not be drunk. I don't like that. It it makes me feel like I have no control over myself and I just don't like that feeling. Um, But the next day, this hangover was so bad that I stopped drinking for a long time. I still, this hangover is the, the, the moment that makes me wonder if I even want to go to a bar ever. Cause I, I will literally think back to this because I was so sick for like three days. It was so bad. I just remember Ty like walking into my bedroom and being like, are you okay? Cause it had been like a day and a half of this. And my grandmother makes like a, a wonderful new year's dinner every first of the year. And I had to call her and be like, I drank so much last night. I'm so sick. I cannot come I can't eat anything I can't hold water down and you know whenever your stomach is upset and you can't hold water down things are only going to get worse from there so I am like heaving like dry heaving not even throwing up but I can't stop my body is trying to get things out and there's nothing to even get out because I've puked it all up it was so bad but it literally lasted for like three straight days I was in bed it was horrible Um, and that is my worst hangover ever. Oh. I don't know if y'all can hear my stomach, but it's it's growling. So um, on that note, I'm gonna I'm gonna skedaddle out of here. Um, go eat me some oatmeal, and um, I'm actually going on vacation today, which is exciting. Um, so I'm gonna go get ready for that. Get this episode up for you guys. Thank you so much for listening. We upload a new podcast episode every. I say we. It's literally me. Um, I upload a new podcast episode every Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you for listening to Not a College Grad, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Bye.